It's the second best day of the year next to Christmas. It's Batman Day! Hey everyone, this is Digital Shark. Cootery like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk Batman and we talk a lot of stuff here. We are a charcuterie board of digital content. Batman Day, September 21st. Had to jump on here and do a quick little video. The Batman 2. Cannot wait for the Batman 2. Uh, EW did an article yesterday, a day, September 20th, an article came out with Matt Reeves discussing the Batman 2 and the Penguin. I did a brief video on that with members only, just talking about it. And I'll do, a, we'll do, probably talk more about it on Super Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern this Tuesday. Let's go into a Batman 2. Look, two years ago, we were introduced to the Reeves verse of Batman film and I, I look long movies i'm always like why are these movies so damn long and this one i was like make it longer make it longer i was all in i loved it i loved it i love it it's not for everybody i understand that the people that i say it was boring it was too violent to whatever it's all subjective but i really enjoyed it and so i want to come on here it's batman day i want to talk about batman I want to talk about batman 2 I want to talk about things that we might see in batman 2 that i am looking forward to seeing in batman 2 and maybe we'll go into a little bit of that EW article that kind of takes it along. So let's get right into it. What can we expect from Matt Reeves' Batman? Wants to be somebody. The mayor. The commissioner. The first film, of course, focused heavily on Batman's detective skills, drawing inspiration from films like Seven and Zodiac. This approach set it apart from other Batman films, leaning into the psychological aspects of crime and corruption in Gotham. Reeves has stated in interviews that he wants to continue this direction with a strong focus on the detective aspect of Batman. This likely means more cerebral villains and complex mysteries in the sequel. One key piece of the puzzle is the ending of the Batman, where we got a brief glimpse of Barry Keoghan as a mysterious prisoner in Arkham Asylum. Of course, he's the Joker. Reeves has been careful not to confirm that Kyogen's character will be the Joker in full, but many fans believe he's setting up the Clown Prince of Crime for a future appearance. While this version of the Joker seems to be more scarred and grounded, in line with the film's gritty tone, it's unclear whether he will take a central role in the Batman 2 or if he'll remain in the shadows for now. Another villain who could return is Paul Dano's Riddler. His portrayal of Edward Nashton was one of the standout performances in The Batman. No! Presenting a Riddler who is more of a serial killer than a flamboyant puzzle master. At the end of the first film, the Riddler is defeated but not dead, leaving the door open for a possible return. Given that he now knows the Joker we might see a team-up or rivalry between the two in Arkham Asylum. But we may be getting a brand new villain in the sequel, one who's not so new to moviegoers or Batman lore at all, of course. And the one name that always comes up and we keep speculating on is Mr. Freeze. Matt Reeves has expressed interest in taking on the challenge of adapting this classic villain to fit into the grounded world he is created. Mr. Freeze, originally a campy villain, was reimagined in the 90s animated series as a tragic figure. His story of a man trying to save his terminally ill wife could provide a compelling emotional core for the Batman 2. Reeves' ability to humanize villains like the Riddler makes him well suited to tackle this more sympathetic version of Mr. Freeze. But here's my problem with doing the Mr. Freeze story, which is a great story, but we've seen it. It's there. We know it. So, like, as much as I'd like to see it and see how it's done in his universe, I'd really be curious to see how Reeves would keep him gritty and grounded. It just, I've seen Mr. Freeze. I mean, I've seen the Joker and other too, but I've seen Mr. Freeze enough. I know the story. So the weight of that story might not be as impactful as, say... A villain like Hush, the Court of Owls, or even a reimagined version of the Mad Hatter. And if you listen to last week's Super Tuesday, I mentioned how there was a rumor going around for the first Batman 
where Matt Hatter was going to be like a street level thug drug dealer. And I was super excited for that. There was a couple of times when I thought the pan camera was going to turn a pan uh, to showcase Matt Hatter on the streets of Gotham, but it was not to be. These could all make sense in the world Reeves has built. These characters all fit into the psychological and noir inspired themes that the Batman is known for. And they could add a fresh dynamic to Gotham's underworld. Now, for who I think would be the perfect villain in the Batman 2, I'm going to have to lean towards, not my favorite villain, but this one. Hush would be a natural fit. In the comics, Hush is a former childhood friend of Bruce Wayne, who becomes a villain bent on destroying Batman. His identity as Thomas Elliot adds a personal angle to the story, and his strategic long-term planning as a villain makes him a perfect fit for the detective-driven narrative Reeves is crafting. So far, Warner Brothers has kept most details under wraps, but one thing is clear. The Batman 2 will but one thing is clear. The Batman 2 will dive deeper into the dark, intricate world Reeves has created. Holy God, what are you this showing me? His head. Come on! Whether it's Joker, Riddler, or Mr. Freeze, or another villain entirely, fans can expect a thrilling continuation of this new chapter in Gotham's history. Perhaps he would like to be our best Iceman at the wedding. And let's bring over to the EW now. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Love talking about it with you. Love chatting Batman with you, of course. Uh, right here we have, speaking at more broad themes, he muses on how Gotham is perennially corrupt. It's the idea that it draws people in the way that it does with Oz Cobb. And this idea of trying to grab for the American dream, the dark side of the American dream. This is in regards to the Penguin Show, but the world of Gotham itself, the Bat Matt Reeves Gotham specifically. Each title set in Gotham world will offer a different shade to the to that dark American dream. But Reeves doesn't want it to feel like homework. You don't have to watch the Batman to understand the Penguin, and you don't have to watch the Penguin to understand the events of the Batman Part 2. It's more that it's taking place within the same world, he continues. If you do watch the whole thing, it's an epic narrative and a meditation on the corruption and why Gotham is the way it is. When I talk about other shows that we're, work that we're talking about doing... What's exciting is to think that going down another alley that we weren't able to go down with the Penguin and the Batman. Reeves is now gearing up for the next movie sequel. The script is finished, he confirms, and everyone is preparing to start production next year. He does tease that there's a period of time part two will jump to after the first film and TV series. Oz does become one of the entry points into the movie he has. I can tell you where it goes from here, except to say that we're super excited about it. Teasing Oz Cobb's role in the Batman 2, an entryway into the movie, into Gotham, into the universe. So you almost think that whatever villain, whatever they are setting up for the Batman 2, will have to lean in on the mob and on Oz Cobb. So wherever this show goes, obviously he's saying you don't have to watch the show to understand, so we'll get some backstory in the actual movie. But it looks like wherever Oz Cobb, the Penguin, winds up after the series, it's going to be important, integral, intricate point, plot point to where the Batman starts. And it, it's good. Whatever the character is, whatever the, the, the main issue is in this movie, whatever the plot is, is going to stem from, is going to, the Penguin's going to lead us in that direction. So the villain, if it's a different villain, one of the villains we've mentioned, they could have their entry point be through the Penguin at the beginning of this movie. And does Oz Cobb die at the beginning of the Penguin of, of the Batman 2? Does the Penguin get offed at the beginning of the Batman 2? Ballsy move. Ballsy move for a character who just had a spinoff show. But it could be plausible. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Oz Cobb going to die? At the beginning of the Batman 2, is the villain going to be Hush, Mr. Freeze, Mad Hatter, Calendar Man? Who's it going to be? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Maybe be the master of your own universe.